Welcome to the deployment section of the course and well done for making it this far. This is really the home stretch now. By the end of this section of the course, you are going to have an app in the respective app stores of Google and Apple, provided of course that you pass their review process. And I will warn you, this section is going to get a little bit technical. Technical in a different sort of way than the building of our app. Technical in the sense that to a large degree, we're gonna be going through a checklist of steps to get our app into the respective app stores. But before we get to that part, I just wanna start here with a high level overview of what it actually means to deploy and publish an app. So what we've been doing to date is we've been working in the bubble factory with its plumes of smoke, okay? And what we've been doing in this factory is building our app represented by this package here because what we're doing in this deployment step is we're packaging up our app and distributing it to our users. So that entails that somewhere in this equation is our user or our user's device. And what we're trying to do by deploying our app is getting this application, this nice little package into our user's device so they can run it, right? So they can access our app. But for native mobile apps, we don't just send our app from Bubble straight to our user's device directly. No, in the middle, we've got one of the app stores, right? Either Apple or Android, it doesn't really matter. They function the same way. Now at a very high level, all we are doing when we deploy is we are getting our application package, which we call a build, into the app store where it can then be downloaded or installed on our end user's device. So this step here is what we call the build or the deployment step. But when we do this, when we build or deploy our app into the app store, we aren't just putting our app out in the shop front for everybody to see and for customers to just install as they please. No, we're actually putting this here in the stock room, the warehouse out the back of the shop, so to speak, right? This right here is an environment that our users actually cannot see. And this is important because while it's in this stock room or storeroom environment, we're going to spruce it up. We're going to add app screenshots, we're gonna add a description, we're gonna add other compliance related information that the app stores are gonna require from us before we put our product out on the front of their shop. And we're also gonna be given the opportunity to pass our build along to some testers who can try out our application before it goes fully public, right? So you can think of these testers as VIPs, basically. They get early access to this stockroom environment, this sort of holding pen for our app before it goes live public out into the world. And they can let us know about any bugs or issues that we then have a chance to resolve before it goes public. And once we're ready to go public, the app store has to approve our application to go into the front of their shop, so to speak. But given that they do, our app will then be available to distribute to users on their device, right? So you can think of this here, this app store is being split into two halves where one half here is the stock room. This is the non-public area where we're going to do things like add compliance information, add app screenshots and other public facing information, give access to testers, right? We're gonna do all of this within this non-public information. And then when we're ready, we're going to hit the publish button and then Apple or Google respectively, depending on which app store that we're publishing in, are going to review our application. And if it passes their review process, it's gonna move into the shop front where it can then be installed by end user devices. Okay, so you can think about this process then of moving it into this public facing area of the app store, right, going from here to here. You can think of this as the publishing step, okay? So there's kind of two fundamental stages here. We've got our build or deployment stage, which is where we 
take our app build and push it into the app store, but just this temporary holding pin stock room area of the app store. And then when we're ready to make it go public, we publish it. So that's the second step is that we publish our application. And once we publish it, then end user devices are free to install it on their device as they wish. So that's how we're doing things at a high level. Where do we start? Well, step number one is what we've already been doing. We've been building our app. So we've been constructing this package within our bubble factory. So this is step one, build the app. After our app is built, there's some last configuration steps that we need to do within bubble before we can deploy. Things like uploading our app icon, which is gonna appear on our user's home screen. It's things like telling bubble which device resources that we are actually using and we're going to go through all of this together in another lesson very shortly so this would be our step number two prepare prepare for deployment then we need to set up our own accounts with apple or google respectively depending on which of these distribution channels that we're going to use so it's important to note these are accounts that we as a developer are going to create with apple and google respectively this is not a relationship that bubble is handling for us and at the time of recording apple and google have different pricing structures as well depending on which service that you're using and i do recommend that you set up your account with apple or google or both as soon as possible because there is some identity verification involved and it can take a few days for your account to get set up. So this would be here, step three, create app store accounts. Once we're all set up with either Apple or Google or both, we can start this process of deploying our app into their respective app stores. So that's this process here that we already discussed where we're going to move our app package which we also call a build into the app store, right? So this would be the fourth step here. Now, once your app is in this non-public area of the app stores, you're gonna to want to test. So this is a process of inviting individual users to have access to your app package or your build file so that they can test it on their real actual end user devices, right? This is not testing via bubble go. This is running the app as if it was installed from either the Apple or the Google app store. So this step here is of course testing. And as part of this testing process, as you get feedback from your test users, you're more than likely gonna to want to push new updates to your application. We're gonna talk about that separately in the next video. But once you've fixed all the bugs, you've implemented all the feedback, it's time to publish. Which of course is this process of moving your app build or bundle, as we sometimes call it, from this non-public area of the App Store into this public area, which of course is going to trigger a review process by Apple or Google, but provided that they approve your app, it will end up in this public area listed on the app stores so that your end users can install your app on their devices. So this step of course is the publishing step. And once our users have installed our app and are using it, then they're gonna live happily ever after. We're gonna retire and live on the beach and our job will be done, right? Yeah, no, that's not quite how it goes, of course. We are also going to have to make continual updates to our application over time as our users give us feedback, as the market shifts. I mean, I don't need to tell you all this stuff, right? An app is a living thing. It's of course going to change over time. So we're gonna to need to make updates to our app and deploying those updates is something that we're going to do again within our bubble environment. And I'm gonna talk a lot more about how this works in the next lesson. So this is a high level overview of the process. And in this section of the course, we're gonna go through each of these steps together. But before we get into the nitty gritty, I wanna just talk more about what it actually means here to be doing a build of our app, especially as it relates to making updates to our app within this testing phase. And once our app is out there live installed on end user devices. So we're gonna talk about that in the next lesson.